I'm a Nicolas physician and uh, it's my honor to be here to share our experience of PSM and PAT in prostate cancer. Um, since there are so many studies that been, have been published to address the building of PSM and PAT in prostate cancer, so I'm not going to uh, talk about all each studies. Instead, I will show you some cases uh, performed in our institution and uh, address some uh, Important articles. Um, this is uh, SNMI's uh, annual meeting held in the United States. Every year, it's like uh, um, the most large um, meetings of nuclear medicine. And each year, they will choose image of the year, just like Oscar Awards in the movie field. And uh, in 2015, this is from uh, Heidelberg University in Germany. They showed a promising result of PSM achievement. Followed by uh, imaging result and the PSA, PSA results. PSA results. And two years later, um, the same group uh, from Heidelberg University they showed a uh, field chaser followed by a uh, radial guide and the Florence guide uh, surgery. And last year, it's from Australia, a phase two called post-action trial for MCRPC patient failed conventional uh, therapies with a very excellent treatment response by PSMA, uh, PSMA Uh but For those images, I want to say it's very uncommon for a single um, head tracer or radio pharmaceuticals to have um, three years image of the year. So this shows the promising uh, future of the PSMA pet or Therapy. And uh, since the very first case performed in 2012, and a lot of uh, studies have been performed, and focus on about chemical recurrence, and uh, this is a, a major problem for diagnosed tests, especially nuclear medicine with new traces. We usually have to limit the sample size, so it makes the evidence uh, weaker. And uh, meta analysis is very quite good to, uh, to collect small samples as into big data to stronger our evidence. So this is the same. Um, I think everyone will use this uh, meta analysis by European Raj. This is very um, uh, earlier um, in 2016. They collected nearly 1,300 patients in 16 studies. And the stratified PSA to see the detection rate. And as you see, as the PSA level increased, the detection rate increased. And the, if uh, the PSA level is above one, nearly all patients will be beneficial from PSA pet. And even with very low level, uh, which means below one, and nearly half of patients, uh, the, the detection will be like half the patients will be beneficial from the pet. And the three years that in early of the 2019, more data, this is the same group in Australia, they did the meta analysis of getting nearly 5,000 patients. In 37 studies, it's also targeted for uh, biochemical recurrence. It's a similar result when the PSA level is about one, almost perfect. And because, and if you see below one, it's um, like half of the patients, similar data, but if very low, it's below 0.2, one third of the patient will be beneficial from uh, PSA pet. But in this, in this very low PSA level, conventional images might have very, very big problem with the detection rate. Um, here I present a case in our institution, which is a 70-year-old uh, prostate cancer patient with the initial PSA 19, with a score 6 at rate of prostatectomy. So that turned out to be uh, this from 9 uh, with positive margin. And soon, bacterial recurrence uh, occurred. And he had a radio therapy with very good response. Um, uh, after a couple of years, the PSA increased again. So the restaging include um, CD, bone and MRI showed some um, equivocal results. So the patient was sent to PSA pet for disease status evaluation. This is a comparison between uh, uh, the first time uh, chemical occurrence, as you can see, uh, some hot spots on the lumbar spine. But this is a limitation of bone skin and 
because this patient is quite old and uh, this is common site for the generation. So the patient <coughs> had a radiotherapy radio because up there they had an angiogram therapy with very good response. And after a few years, you can see that some progress change of the lumbar spine. Um, this is very hard to say, this uh, metastatic formation. So we can take a look at the PS map has skin. This is a mid image, and the, the patient is clearly seen by two hotspots located as sternum three and uh, uh, as well as the spine. That is true that some false positive may be seen on the rib or um, inguinal node, but um, since Sternum is not a common site for um, benign formations, so we consider these three sites as a metastatic formation. The patient has radiotherapy to these three metastatic formations with very good PSA response. Um, during the last year, we have a 50 patient coming for um, PSA test due to blood chemical recurrence in the median PSA was around 1.5, and if we compare PSA methods, versus conventional imaging, which means CDMI or bone scan. Most of them are superior or equal to conventional imaging, except the one case which I will show in the next slide. And again, we stratify PSA level into just like mesh meta-analysis, a uh, very similar result, except that we have very good uh, infection rate between 0.5 to 1.0. It's uh, 75 percent. But this is a very, very limited size, but, but, uh, but uh, it's a similar result. Um, the other case will be a 76-year-old prostate cancer patient with initial PSA 23, which is called 6. He had primary trial therapy with a very good response. And a few years, uh, the patient had um, local recurrence and after and regular therapy with uh, acceptable response. They are gradually increased to four. So the restaging in bone scan showing a single formation. However, the CT scan showed multiple open spaces. It's for this uh, this total result between CT and bone scan. The patient was sent for PSMA. Um, this is a. Um, Baseline uh, bone skin, and actually he had a uh, higher bone skin a few years ago. A uh, similar uh, lesion was found at right femur, so without significant interval change, so we consider this as a benign bone lesion. But this three bone metastasis noted by bone skin, all of them were not shown by bone skin. So as well as PSMA PET, as you can see the fish image, there's no uptake at all on the bone locasis shown on ICD. Uh, so the patient had MD and therapy with a uh, very good response. Um, this is the only false negative case we have um, occurred in a uh, chemical recurrence scenario. And the other <coughs> Less common indications for primary stage many focus on the lymph node uh, evaluation. And the largest cohort is performed by uh, Dr. Martha in 2016. It includes one, at least so far, the largest cohort, including 103 patients. It's very, very good um, sensitivity as and accuracy as compared to conventional images. And afterwards, some small sample size, like uh, 30 patients, showed a similar results. So, um, we assume that PSMF had a superiority set of strategic imaging if we operate lymph nodes. And of course, we have some cases that is false negative, but uh, generally, these cases are also negative by MRI. Um, Korean group collects all these um, small samples, as including a uh, study into a meta showing very good lymph node detection rate. By specificity of 95% and acceptable sensitivity of 71%. I was, uh, the other important uh, part for primary statement is to detect distant metastasis, especially bone metastasis. And this size is uh, just as, as smaller as uh, uh, Dr. Morpheus, so I will skip this one. Instead, 
uh, we already know that PS and PET is superior to Bonescape. Either by uh, planar image or 3D spectral image. I would like to address that we have um, sodium fluoride bone pads to evaluate bone metastasis. Um, the, there are about five uh, publications directly compared uh, PSMA pads and uh, sodium fluoride uh, bone pads with very discordant results. Only one of them showed uh, the superior ability of PSMA pads compared to sodium fluoride, and the other four showed. Uh, inferior ability, but uh, it depends on the scenario, um, such as uh, the tumor stage and the treatment plan. Um, despite of the result, I think sodium fluoride both fits is not a concern because it's much expensive. You can benefit less than the cost, so it's like you cannot do bone pad and the PSMA pad in the both skin the same patient such a high cost, so I think it's a uh, little bit of an uh, experiment. As well as the small sample size. And the, the most interesting part is assessing the primary prostate tumor. It's very, very few data, but uh, assuming that <coughs> PSMA over expression should be proportional to the uh, tumor aggressiveness, such as uh, higher glycine score, higher stage, or higher PSA. You should see the trend that uh, if the glucose score increase, the outcome value should increase too. But uh, this uh, from this this uh, study includes I think 126 patients. We didn't see the trend um, according to the glucose score. However, if you divide into two groups, which means eight, nine, ten versus six and seven, it's totally different. The this group is much higher as we evaluate this group. This is true that um, this group means higher, more aggressiveness. As well as um, PS level of 10, or you divide subgroup 7 and instead divide PS level of 10. But um, this very most important part, if you take a look at using score 7 or other groups, this is a wide range. Even with the 7A, the SV value could be higher as nearly 40 and lower. So, in such higher heterogeneity of the human nature, much more sample size should collect to prove that um, the trend of the PSMA uh, uptake is proportional to the same score. Um, the other group, group is, uh, with this is a China group uh, with 40 patients. The similar results was shown by this is score of 8. Uh, they choose uh, 20 as the color of PSA and the lower to intermediate risk as compared to high risk, but more severe of the disease by risk, PSA or this is for the high uptake of the PSMA patch. Um, this is by Turkey group including nearly 78 patients and uh, again they didn't show any trend of the increasing uh, uptake according to the business score. But once again, if you divide into two groups, it's significantly higher uptake in this group than this group. And they also spread by PSA by 10 and 20. They said also the similar trend. Um, we have 80 patients coming for um, time staging um, since last year. And uh, very, very similar results. So I think it's not coincidence, but uh, really a phenomenon that there is no trend for the glycine score, but if you divide again into two groups, it's significantly higher than um, in glycine score 9 and 10 compared to 6 and 7. But again, it's a wide range. And so if you, this is an example of the primary prostate tumor. If you take a look at this one and this one, the same pain, the same uh, glycine score as 6, but with different. Um, PSA level, you can see higher uptake and lower uptake. In my opinion, actually in my observation, when the glycine score increased uh, above 8, uh, glycine score plays minor role. Instead, um, the PSA will place to show higher uptake value according to PSA in high glycine score. Although we have to do more cases to prove it. 
And this is the last case which I will show you that uh, 76 year old prostate cancer patient with initial PSA 25, prostate score 3, uh, 6, and the patient has PSA tech skill for final staging. And this is the case I showed that the, the previous slide, very, very high uptake at the right prostate, prostate uh, despite a low prostate score. So the patient was advised to have complementary biopsy to choose radial therapy or anti-surgical surgery. So the complementary biopsy was performed. The turned out to be high upgrade to business score seven. So the patient has polyethylene curve and radial therapy, and with a decreasing PSA level. And the slides just in that um, there should be an optimal cutoff of PSA level in patient with uh, decision making either by uh, treatment or active surveillance. Um, since PSA method has been widely applied in every time, every scenario of the um, prostate cancer, I think there's still some way we can do, which means uh, early detection of the bacterial recurrence, specifically below 0.5 of PSA. And uh, uh, the other uh, indication will be the HP pro surveillance to decide what kind of patients should be suitable for this. And of course, protein study is already done by many um, studies to prove that PSA uh, 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 is a uh, uh, surrogate of the future uh, response. I didn't talk a lot about the therapy because currently we don't have a tissue or, act or actinium. But uh, it's already a, like a, a, a clinical routine in the in a clinical setting. Um, finally, uh, there is a joke that nuclear medicine is unclear medicine because it's lower resolution, so we cannot see anything. But um, by PSMED PET, we can see what we treat and we treat what we see. It makes a part, a very good example of precision medicine in the maximum nuclear medicine as a new and clear medicine. Thank you very much. Thank you.